Hi, my name is Markus Klenke and I am Software Consultant and Solution Architect at Team GmbH. For this video I am going to show you how you can install the J4O server. This can be split into three tasks. The first one is downloading the required files, especially the J4O server itself. The second part will be how you can configure your J4O server for your needs. So let's say this is the base configuration you can do. And for the third part, uh, we will verify that our installation is working. So uh, let's start with it. To run the J4O server on your computer, on your, on your server, you have to download two separate files. Um, the first one is the sources for the J4O server itself, uh, which can be downloaded from justfororacle.com. The second part is the JDBC driver that is required to access the database of your vendor. So uh, in our case, we will use the Oracle JDBC driver. Um, in your case, it could be um, the Postgres database or MySQL database, for example. Um, so let's start to download the J4 sources. Uh, so go to justfororacle.com. On the top right side, you see a link that says download. If you click it, it will scroll down to the actual button that uh, starts the download. If you click it, you'll see a zip file will be downloaded about 200 megs. Um, just save it. It contains everything you need to run the J4 server. To access the database and run reports on the server, we actually need the JDBC driver as well. So let's just go to Download. Um, this uh, link, JDBC and UCP download page, is the correct one. Uh, if you go to the page, you will see that there's two separate parts. So the first part is the 19C and 18C JDBC drivers. Um, and uh, these should be used if you take a database uh, that is uh, that new or that release. Uh, you can take the older ones uh, for these uh, versions, but um, actually it's, it's a good idea to use the correct driver set for the correct database. If you have an older uh, release of the database, so 12C or 11G, uh, uh, you can take uh, the Oracle JDBC 6 driver. The links corresponding will lead you to the correct JDBC driver. So I have an XE 18C database on my computer. So I click on 18C link and uh, we just need the OJDBC8 jar file in this case. So do not download the full tar. Uh, this contains a lot of demo stuff you will need. So we click jar file and uh, as typical for Oracle, we need an Oracle account to sign in to download the sources, credentials, and the download should start immediately. So just save this file. Um, you can go to Maven to download the jar file as well uh, if you do not have an Oracle account, uh, but uh, take credit that uh, you have to agree to the license uh, at all. Um, the other way would be that you can go to the home folder of your database. There you will find the JDBC driver as well. So if you have a database installed, as I have, or if you have database at hand, uh, you can take the JDBC driver from there. Okay, that's all we have to download at this point. Uh, the next part will be the configuration of the server. So after downloading the sources, let's go to the administration or configuration of uh, the J4 server. Uh, you should see a folder uh, residing the zip file of our sources and the jar file of the JDBC driver. Um, let's unzip the uh, J4 server first. So then after unzipping, you can remove the zip file and take the JDBC driver, copy it and paste it inside the resources JR library folder, which is the base library folder for our server. So um, let's see a short introduction of the folder structure. Uh, the bin folder contains uh, the binary files that uh, the server consists of. Database is the folder you use for connecting uh, to the J4 server via PSQL. So this is actually part of another video you can see on the on the homepage. Um, licenses, base licenses, uh, licenses uh, 
resources contains the actually uh, used reports uh, or global libraries that you use uh, when using just the reports. And we have some files in here, especially the just for Oracle config file is interesting. So let's open it. Um, we have some parameter set like uh, admin user admin password, which is the admin user and password for the UI layer of our server, so the administration uh, UI application. Um, you see the one of the most important parameters is the JDBC driver names, so uh, which JDBC driver you are using for the server. So as I said uh, before, you can use MySQL or Postgres. In this case, we used Oracle driver from the Oracle JDBC uh, connection. Um, the parameters that I use uh, inside this tutorial, uh, but you do not have to use are the de default DB parameters in, in here. Uh, as I said uh, before, I use an, a local XE database for testing or using the server. So let's just type in the parameters. Uh, service to be, or database service to be found on localhost 21 and just call the XE 21. The user I want to connect to is HR and the password is HR as well. Uh, this is default behavior. You can uh, change it uh, or leave it out uh, and um, use any connection database user password um, for each call as you do so or uh, pre configured in the database you might be used. Okay, let's close this one. And uh, the next interesting configuration is sitting the start server uh, files. Uh, there's one file for Linux servers, one file for Windows servers. So uh, as I'm on my local Windows machine, I uh, change the start server button. And there you see it's just the Java call to, to actually run our server. Uh, and most importantly, the port parameter that is here. Uh, I put it to 1899, uh, which is actually the default. You can put it to any port you want. It's important that uh, port that is provided uh, and free on your machine. So let's just start the machine up. You will see uh, the command window opening. Um, actually, the uh, Whitefly server is starting in the background, and after some seconds, you will see that the server has started. Um, to test our server, uh, we can actually call a report that we provide uh, with the installation. To verify if the Team J4 server has been installed correctly, uh, we provided a demo sample report that you can execute. Uh, for this, you can call the test server script. Again, uh, for Linux servers as a shell, for Windows servers as a batch file. If we take a short look at it, uh, it's again just calling a Java, plain Java uh, method or class. Uh, important is the parameters host port um, so that you can access your uh, running J4 server. So for me, I put it on localhost and port 8899. Uh, as you saw earlier, if you put it on a remote machine or something else you can change the host name or uh, the port if you put it on another port. Uh, we also provided a test parameter so let's say uh, uh, Marcos uh, which will then be provided to the actual Jasper report. So if we start this one let's just run it. Uh, the output will be a URL uh, in the token, actually, copy this one Oops. and open a browser, paste it. We should see the PDF generated from the Just Report. So, in this case, I'm running on Just Report version 6.9. I've installed the J4 server to see J4, uh, and the parameter is set hello markers. So, if you see this PDF, everything worked fine. And you are ready to go.